Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome back to 3430. It's good to be with you today, wherever you are in the world. Now today, the internet is quite slow here in the East Midlands in the UK. I will do my best. If you get lagginess on the stream, please just refresh your browser. We'll see how we go. The bitrate seems to have stabilized for the time being, but 10 minutes ago, we weren't getting any at all. We will battle on. I will do my best. Let me know in the chat. Can you see me? Can you hear me for the time being? And let me put a question to you. Get you thinking about VBA straight away. Remember in VBA, we have three main loop controls and we've done two loop controls so far we've done our basic for next loop that's where we have a variable that we usually call counter and the syntax is something like for counter equals one to ten and we've done the simple problem of just creating a list of numbers from one to ten using the for next loop then we've got our for each loop and that presents new possibilities for us because it allows us to work easily with objects and collections remember excel organizes its objects into collections so we can say to excel can you do to something to everything in this collection we did that yesterday when we said for each worksheet in the worksheet collection and we were listing the worksheet name. So what's the third main looping technique we use in Excel VBA? And you would have seen it on the channel if you're a fan of the channel. Good to see in the chat. Some people say we're loud and clear today. So let me know in the chat, what's the third main looping technique? That's what we're going to be doing today. Let me get into the chat and connect with a few of you. Hello, Jorgen, General, First in the chat, welcome. Ahmed is here from Bahrain. Welcome, Paul. Welcome from Barnsley. Paul's got a beer on. Why not enjoy the VBA? Ian is here from Edinburgh. Welcome, Ian. Rick from Iowa. Welcome. Frank from the Netherlands is here. Welcome, Frank. Peter is with us again. Hi, Peter from Liverpool. Welcome. Uh, Kapil is here from India. I think it's your first time, Kapil. Welcome. Pete B is here. Welcome, Pete. Lee is with us. Channel member. Good to see you, Lee. Up in Manchester. Kestusis is with us. Welcome. And Gusa is with us from Spain. Welcome, Gusa. Jasvin is with us from Orange County, California. I believe that's where you are, Jasvin. Sorry if I got that wrong. Chris is with us uh, from London. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Adrian. Uh, welcome, Lisa. And is that everybody? We've got Hamed with us from Malaysia. Welcome, Hamed. It's midnight over there. That is a great effort. Thank you so much for staying up. Really good to have you with us. Adrian is with us. Rayhan is with us. Welcome, Rayhan. Tony is with us. And Tony has kicked us off with a great answer. Adrian also with a great answer. Check these out in the chat. Get involved yourself, guys, in the chat. So Tony is saying do while or do until. Adrian is saying loop until. And Jens and Yernedge have just checked in, as have Lee. Welcome, guys. So as always, make sure you open an Excel file. Work along with me. So you can see it's a new Excel file. I haven't even saved this one. I'm not going to save this file in this stream. So we're going to go to the Visual Basic Editor. Let me get this uh, into your screenshot here. There we go. And then what do we do when we start working with VBA? Well, as always, this should feel like an old routine for you now. We're going to uh, create a new module. I'm going to type in Option Explicit, but you may have set up the VBA Editor so the Option Explicit appears automatically. If you've insisted on variable declaration, go back to yesterday's stream. If you'd like to know how to do that, and the, we do have the answer in the chat. So Tony and Adrian, well done, well done, guys. Adrian says, where's your brother? I don't know where Steve is. Where is he? Is he going to tune in today? Who knows? So let's go for... And we're going to say do until example here because the key concept here is do until. Well, we're going to start with do until. Do and loop are the two key pieces of syntax. And you might be saying to me, but Chris, we've done three different loop controls now. Do we need all three? You know what? You don't need all three. And certainly when I started in VBA, I was only really using four next loops. But you'll see the different looping techniques give us different possibilities, give us more flexibility. The particular benefit I like of a do and loop loop is that we can be more flexible about the exit condition. What on earth does that mean? All this computer program I chat, exit condition. Well, when we do a for next loop, we just say for something equals one to 10. So a simple exit condition, one to 10. So the truth is we can have all kinds of exit conditions. We can say to Excel, do something until 
a value in a cell equals a certain value something like that so we can have all kinds of different exit conditions this is why i like to integrate do until this is why you should integrate do until into your practice as well um, so we will need a variable here and i'm going to say counter in fact i'm going to do, use a different variable name just to show that you can do that so let's say chris counter today Okay, and then the basic syntax. So let's say Chris counter do until here. Chris counter equals 10 just to get us started. And then we've opened the loop now. What do we have to do? We have to close the loop. And here's, as always, our foundational syntax. These are the bits of VBA language we need to get us started. Now, one thing to note here, you may get in trouble with do until loops, okay? Because of the way the syntax works, you're more likely to create an error that puts you in an interminable loop, which means you'll never stop and you'll have to hold down the escape key, hold down the escape key on the Windows PC. That will stop uh, Excel if it's running the code, if it's just looping around. Now, the key piece of uh, syntax we need here is I'm going to use control space. Uh, is DC in the chat today? DC, are you with us? DC is always saying I should use control space more. Uh, Chris counter that. Chris counter equals Chris counter plus one. So remember, all, all of these are, all of this language, you know, we're, I'm not just throwing new stuff at you. We've got, don't forget, we've got our foundational concepts. You know, each session we introduce a new foundational concept. You're going to see those repeated. Even the code I'm doing day in, day out, day in, day out for customers, it consists of these foundational concepts primarily. So they're super useful. So you've got to make sure you set up this syntax and remember, remember to put in this line of code. If you don't put in this line of code, um, the value of the variable is not going to increment up is the variable is not going to get bigger. That means we ne may never satisfy our exit condition. And just to be sure here, I'm going to assign a value to the variable at the beginning of the routine. That's not absolutely, absolutely necessary. If we don't assign a value to the variable, Excel will assign it a value of zero anyway. But just for clarity here for maximum precision, let's make sure the variable starts with one. So I'm going to hit the F8 key now and then let's see what happens. So experimentation play. This is what you should be doing. Just trying things out yourself. This is how you can really learn. So what's the value of Chris counter is one. The first time we're going through the loop, uh, we've got a message box here. In fact, I'm just going to switch off the message box because we can do this because uh, I'm in the VBA editor now. We can kind of do this. So I'm just uh, stepping through using the F8 key. You can also go debug and step into. So what value has Chris Counter got to here? Chris Counter has got to five, six, seven, eight. So is it nine now? Chris Counter is now nine. Now Chris Counter is 10. So our exit condition is now satisfied. So where is the VBA editor going to go now? Is it going to go down to this line of code? Or is it going to go to the loop line of code and exit the loop? We can see we exit the loop because the exit condition was satisfied. If you don't increment the value of the variable up, the exit condition is not going to be satisfied. So that proves kind of the mechanics of the loop, proves the basics are working there. So let's go ahead and do our, our basic task first. And, and we'll do something else too, but our basic task of just listing the numbers. So if you watch on the replay, stop the video see if you can do this yourself see if you can create just a list of numbers here so let's say uh, b3 looks like a sensible starting point dot offset and then we've got fish and chips fish and chips coming in here we're going to have a synergy between position control our offset method and the use of the variable here and zero so we're going to go the number of rows down that's controlled by the variable, then zero columns across and then equals. Now we can just say Chris counter because the, the value of that variable is going to increment up. Now what's going to happen if you're very observant, you will be able to tell me exactly what's going to happen now. How many uh, how many numbers are we going to have listed in Excel here? 
Hmm. Is it going to be 10? Not absolutely sure. I don't think it's going to be 10. I think it's going to be nine because XL is going to exit the loop when the value of the variable equals 10. So I don't think Excel is going to actually input 10. Anyway, let's hit the F5 key, quick sense check of the code. It looks reasonable. Hitting F5 and we can see our numbers appearing there. And it's as I thought, I did, did a bit of, bit of preparation today. Full disclosure, I did do a little bit of preparation. What if we change this to Chris counter is more than 10? So this means the time that we go through the loop when Chris counter equals 10, we should work through the loop. So what's going to happen now when I play the code? Make sure you're doing this play yourself at home, hitting the F5 key, and we can see we've got 10 there now. Okay, pretty cool. So let me know in the chat, um, have you been able to follow on with that example? I'll give everybody a little bit of time to catch up here. Uh, Lee Stanilund is with us to get today. Welcome, Lee. Lee Stanilund, as you can see, is a member. And if you're enjoying this kind of stuff, how about you consider a Members Monday membership? Now, Bart is with us in the chat, and I'm sure Bart won't mind me showing his Members Monday testimonial. But once a week, you're going to get an hour-long Excel VBA tutorial with me. A similar format to this, but different as well, because we work on a member file. So one of the members sends me the file and we'll try to work together to get an Excel VBA task done. So it's learning about code like this, but much more attention to kind of the practic the practical side, you know, how do coding projects work in real life? What kind of code works in real life? Because obviously in, in real life, I'm a practicing VBA consultant. I'm working on these projects every day. And I'm trying to um, kind of communicate the best way to do these projects, you know, to create value for you, your company, uh, whoever uh, you're looking to uh, to work for that. So if you're interested, go ahead, hit join below this video. 30 for 30 will continue, of course, and we will be going to at least 30 streams. What's going to happen after that? Do you want more 30 for 30? Uh, Steve's here in the chat. Welcome, Steve. Good to see you. Uh, Bart is with us today. Welcome, Bart. Hope you're doing well, Bart. William is just checking in. Welcome, William from Brazil. Okay, good. So let me know in the chat, have you got this running? So the next thing I want to demonstrate is the flexibility, some of the power or the new options that a do until loop brings. Because it gives us more flexibility in terms of the exit condition. We can say to Excel, not just do this 10 times, which can feel a bit pedestrian. We can do that with a for next loop. We can say to Excel, do this until another condition is met. And one good example is do this until a cell in the spreadsheet reaches a certain value. This is a common, a common application of do until loops. You might be inputting values into a model until the model reaches a certain point. You know, it sounds ki kind of generic, but that might give you a sense of exactly how it works. So in order to do this, let's create a quick model here. I'm just going to highlight this range uh, so that I know where the numbers are going in. And then very quick, let's have two calculation cells here. So this cell is going to be a run between. We're going to generate some random numbers here. So let's have run between one and 10. And then here, let's sum up the numbers and let's, let's go for, let's go to cell 20, just inside your screenshot. Let's go to cell 25 there. So just to remind myself, I'm going to highlight these cells going down to 25. So home, and then, yep, yeah, I'm just going to put some fill in there. So what's going to happen now? Well, if you hit the F9 key, Excel is going to calculate. And you can see every time Excel calculates, Excel generates a new random number. If we put numbers in here, then we can see those numbers are going to be aggregated, added up uh, right here in this little sum formula. Just for display purposes, I'm going to change the column width here, Alt H O W three. And again, and just to remind ourselves, let's say random here and let's say sum here. So suppose our logic is we want to keep inputting numbers into this area. So a random number between one and 10, we want to keep inputting numbers until we reach a certain value. 
until the aggregate, the total of these numbers reaches a certain value. Sounds like some crazy logic, but this kind of logic is the kind of application that you might be trying to do and that do until is going to help us with. So to do this, again, start the video, see if you can do it yourself, always buy myself a little bit of thinking time uh, by doing that. Uh, but most of the code we're going to retain. Um, so we don't want the value of the variable to be inputted. We want the value in D4 to be inputted. Range D4. Okay, there we go. So if we run the code now, what's going to happen? Well, we should have 10 random numbers here. There we go. Let's delete this quickly. I'll just step through the code so you can see what's happening there using the F8 key. So we should see these random numbers generated one by one. Now, one thing to know is every time we input a value to the spreadsheet, even if VBA does it, Excel is going to calculate. When Excel calculates, we're going to get a new random number. You can see right there in cell D4, uh, we're going to get a new random number. So when I execute this line of code, hit the F8 key, you can see we generated a new random number and we've got the old random number inputted into our list there. So you can see how the random numbers are building up here. Let's go ahead now. You know what? I've been, I've got it getting a bit tired of clearing values like this. Control shift, down arrow and delete. Yeah, we can use the keyboard shortcuts, but we can automate it using Excel VBA. So why don't we clear the cells first? We can do that uh, in VBA. So what do we got? B4 to B25. B4 to B25. So just be careful with the notation there. Syntax got it, has got to be accurate, of course. Then we're going to say clear contents here. Now we do have a clear method. Clear is going to clear everything. Going to clear the formats. I want to retain the formats. That's going to keep our shading. That's helpful for me. So we can say clear contents here. And actually, I'm not going to save the file. Right. So what's going to happen now? I'm going to hit the F5 key again. We can see our random numbers being generated. OK, so we've got a kind of model set up there. That's the basic function. Now, we're interested in this exit condition. Can we do something more interesting than just generating 10 numbers? And I've had the idea and what I'm going to demonstrate is looking at a cell in the spreadsheet, saying to Excel, keep an eye on that cell. And we can see this cell is updating as we go through the code. You would have seen when I stepped through the code. When the cell reaches a certain value, then exit the routine. And let's say, let's take a value of 50. And it's not going to be the variable, of course. This is a range, D5. Range D5 is more than 50. So I'm just sense checking this now. Yep, D5 is the sum. D4 is the random number. Looks reasonable enough to me. Let me know in the chat. Are we following along there? Okay, how many viewers have we got today? We've got 37 viewers and nine likes. Fantastic stuff, guys. Uh, yeah, I will break out the press ups again for 60 concurrent viewers. We got to 52 yesterday. I think it's a little bit quieter today. I mean, I suppose as we go through, because there's going to be more and more videos on, maybe we'll have fewer people tuning into the live, more people catching up with the previous videos. When we do get to 60, 60 concurrent videos, I'll be happy to break out another set of press ups. And I hope you're doing some kind of physical activity, whether you're just getting out, having a walk, walking the dog, having a little ride on your bike, whatever you're doing, make sure you're getting out there doing some kind of physical activity. OK, Bart says, I'm OK, but I have some Excel VBA problems at work. I might need some help from you and the members. I will tell it in the Facebook group a little bit later. Yeah, very good, Bart. So you can see Bart in the chat. He's one of our members. We have a Facebook group for the members, Monday members. So you can put your Excel problems on there, what you're trying to do in VBA. Get some help from the members. I'm um, very well. Thanks, Bart. A little bit stressed about the Internet today because we have very slow Internet, but it seems to be going pretty well in the stream now. Yes, we've got a good uh, bit rate. Yeah, Bart says we could use dot clear. Absolutely. Steve says, can you explain what sense checking is? Yeah, sense checking is just reading through the code before you run the code, checking for those silly mistakes. 
I make plenty of those silly mistakes and I'm sure you will, unless you're some kind of genius, you will as long as you go uh, as you go through your career. So really checking for, for typos. So I'm looking particularly at the cell references. Are they accurate? So D5, that's got to be our sum cell. That looks OK. D4, that's got to be our random number cell. That looks OK. Uh, and then things like the spelling of the variable. Well, option explicit helps us with that. So I'm less worried about the spelling of the variable. I'm kind of checking through those references. It's just, does the syntax look reasonable? Not reading through it in detail, just checking the main parts. That's what I call a sense check. If you do that before you exit your route, uh, before you execute your routine, you should be able to avoid some errors. Particularly important in this kind of situation where we're using a loop, particularly a do into a do until loop because we want to make sure that we'll satisfy that exit condition. If we run the code and the exit condition isn't satisfied, that's when we might end up in one of those interminable endless loops. And we certainly want to avoid that if possible. OK, let's go ahead and run the code. I'm going to hit, um, hit the F8 key on the Windows PC. So the first line of code, remember when the code is highlighted, the code has not run. So the code's about to run when it's highlighted. So I'm going to hit the F8 key, clearing the contents there. You can see we've got a new random number generated because Excel has calculated, initializing the value of the variable there. Uh, so our exit condition, is the condition satisfied? So does D5 just hit the selected cell? Is it more than 50? No, it's not. So Excel is going to work through the instructions in the loop. And in this case, it's going to just put our random number in there and increment the variable up. That's going to work with offset to move the next value down. This beautiful synergy, fish and chips right here. And just working through the code. OK, so this is about the fourth time through the code. Is the exit condition met? Well, D5 equals 26. So the exit condition is not met. D5 equals 34, 41. We're getting there. 45. And here we go, 55. So the next time Excel gets to the exit condition, where is the VBA editor going to go now? The VBA editor is going to exit the loop. And that's it. That's a do until loop. And the important part there is uh, the additional options it gives us for exit conditions. So let me know in the chat, guys, do you want me to do any extensions on this example or are you pretty cool with this example? I, I will do one extension when I've checked the chat. Any questions here? I'll do one extension here. Lee said I just got an endless loop. What should you do if you get an endless loop? One way to stop it is to disconnect your laptop and throw it out the window. That will stop Excel, but I don't recommend that. Hold down the escape key. And Steve in the chat is going to tell me the equivalent of the escape key on Mac. Hold down the escape key. You have to hold it down. Don't just press it. That will get Excel to come up with an error message. Hit debug and that should get you out of your endless loop. If that doesn't work, you're going to have to do the old control alt and delete old school control alt and delete something like that and that should stop excel or you can try closing excel in the top left hand corner click in the top right corner click in the top right that might close excel okay good and steve says escape on mac good henrik says a message box when 50 is reached yep good we'll put a couple of things things in that so let me show you one more way to set this up. So we can just say, let's take it back to its basic components here. So we, all you actually need is do and loop. But as it stands, there's no exit condition here. So this would be, this would give us one, well, one of those endless loops. But another nice feature of do until is you can put a conditional statement in and then use this line of code exit do exit do super powerful so you can see there's no exit condition here what this is crazy no exit condition here what this is crazy how on earth is this working if this is the case you have to have an exit condition inside the loop and that means that excel will exit the loop when that condition is met that exit condition can be in the loop if we're using exit do another cool feature of do until loops 
Uh, let's go ahead and test this. Just going to hit the play button. Okay. And we can see every time or pretty much every time we run this, we're getting different, a different number of numbers. The length of the list is different. Of course, that's because we're generating random numbers. We're going to have different random numbers every time. And let's do the final thing here, which is, yeah, Henrik says a message box when 50 is reached. I love it, Henrik. Great idea. Uh, good user communication. So important in, in Excel VBA. How would we do that? Um, let's say, let's say outside of the loop. And let's say, let's try something like message box. Um, so max value reached. There we go. And then I'm going to give you a final chal challenge today. Uh, hit the F5 key here. And there we go. We've got max value reached. My final challenge for you is final challenge today. I want this message box to say the number of numbers that it took to reach the max value. For example, here we've got how many numbers? 10 numbers. Max value reached in 10 numbers. Hmm. How about that? It would be easy to hard code it to just write that text in in 10 numbers, but I want that to be dynamic so that if there's only three numbers, I want it to say max value reached in three numbers. That's our final challenge for today, guys. Let me know in the chat. How can we do that? Either write the syntax in the chat or explain conceptually how we would do that, what tools we would need. We've got 41 concurrent viewers. We did go up to 45 for a second, so I was limbering up a bit, but whoo. Just relaxing now. I don't think I'm going to have to break out the press ups. What else is going on in the chat? Rick says, how about placing the count of how many round numbers were created when hitting 50? Rick, I think that's exactly what I've just requested here. Great minds, Rick. What can I say? Great minds thinking alike there. So maybe you've been thinking about that, Rick. How would that actually work? Uh, Bart says, hey, you know, I'm a fan of the dynamic statement. Absolutely. We're going to talk more about dynamic quality as we move uh, through this co uh, this program. Can we make 50 dynamic? Absolutely. Absolutely, Bart. So, so this, our exit condition here, and I won't do this, but we could have another cell here, 50, and say max value. That means we could change the value here. We could change the value and then get the code to look at the spreadsheet. So cell D6, get the code to look at the cell D6 rather than having the hard coded value in the routine. So that would be another improvement. Good. Um, Lisa, my head is blown. Don't worry, Lee. Don't worry. This is advanced stuff we're on now. Don't worry. So just take your time. Go back to the previous videos. We are building things uh, in building blocks, you know, kind of one step at a time, one brick at a time. Don't worry. It's a lot to take in. Go back to the previous stream. Take your time. Work through these streams slowly. Peter Jones says control and break. OK, control and break. So if you're in an endless loop, control and break must be a good option for getting out of the loop. Henrik's got a good idea. Henrik's got a good idea, which is using worksheet function count A. Yes. Yeah, so we could uh, get Excel to um, by using a formula effectively to count the number of numbers in our list. I like that. that. That's a good concept. That's not the one we're going to use. Can you think of another way to do this? In the routine, somewhere is counting the number of numbers. And Lee's absolutely right as well. Yeah, so good conceptual thinking here. Lee is saying needs to count the number of cells in column B. We could do that in, in a slicker way. And let's say Chris counter here by using the variable. Remember, we've got a variable that's counting up each time we go through the loop. I think it's going to be Chris counter plus one. And numbers. There we go. Whoops, can't see. Can't see the code. What's going on? There we go. Okay, so how about this? Hit the F5 key. Max value reached in nine numbers. OK, it shouldn't be plus one here. This, this should just be Chris Counter. F5, play the code. Max value reached in seven numbers. We can see seven numbers there. Play the code. Max value reached in 11 numbers. That's pretty cool. You know, there's a few people saying they're struggling. Lee saying he's struggling. But this is this is advanced stuff, guys. There's so much 
value packed into that little routine. We've got a loop in there. We've got a conditional statement in there. We've got offset in there to create position control, working with a variable. And then we've got a variable, uh, we've got a variable incrementing up and we've got a dynamic message box. You see this syntax allows us to connect a string, a text string, some text to a variable. And that the effect of that is to create this super cool message where that number changes. It's dynamic. That's what we mean by when something's dynamic. It changes with the circumstances. It changes as um, as the inputs are changing effectively. Cool. Um, yeah, got some good ideas in the chat there. OK, guys, fantastic stuff. Very good. Now, now one little announcement from me. Um, that's a tough session. So make sure you take your time with that and really, you know, go through the stream, pause it and make sure you catch up, you know, really work on those skills. Uh, so we're going to have 30 sessions and for the last session, uh, the last one, which will be in what, three weeks time, I want to do a, a kind of celebration stream and it's going to be a marathon stream. What we're going to do on that final stream is work through a real world task. Okay. Okay. So my question to you is, are you trying to do something in Excel VBA? And uh, the Members Monday people like Bart and Jasmine, and even the new guys, uh, you'll be used to somebody sending a file to me and me trying, trying to help you work it out. That's what we're going to do in the last stream. So number 30, stream 30, I'm going to work through a user file and it's not going to be 30 minutes. That one might be 30 hours. That, that, that'll that probably be a few hours I might have a couple of beers here. We'll see how it goes. But the point is to apply everything we've learned or certainly, you know, some of the best bits to get a real job done in Excel. So if you've got a, something that might be appropriate, you know, it can't be too complicated and it can't involve too much work on my part. But if you've got a fairly simple example of something you're trying to do, you know, you could be copy pasting data around a file, you know, doing something very manual. Whatever it might be, you're very welcome to send it to me, info at tigersolutions.co.uk, info at tigersolutions.co.uk. Send it to me. I'll have a look at it. I can't guarantee that I'm going to use your example, but I'm looking for an example. And if we do it ahead of time, I'll have time to have a good look at it and to get it into shape so that we can use it in this final stream, which is number 30. OK, guys, that's all from me today then. Henrik says these 30 minutes are fantastic. Fantastic, Henrik. I'm absolutely loving it and loving how many people keep uh, turning up for this. Stanislav, excellent. Good to see you again. Hammer, nice, clear explanation. Thank you, Hammer. Good to see you again. And Lisa says everything worked fantastic. Good to see you, Lisa. And thank you. And the general says, thanks again, Chris. Very good lesson. Looking forward to the longer session in the end. Good. Yeah, the longer session. That is going to be fun. Good luck with this, guys. So, you know, three looping techniques. Now, this is advanced stuff. So take the time to really learn it as best you can. Work on your own examples. If you can get to grips with these and learn to apply them, you're going to be able to do so much in Excel VBA. Take good care of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.